Welcome back, Master Crafty Gaming fans. Kyle here to bring you a preview on Forces of Nature in Kings of War 3rd Edition. Let's start off with the Hunters of the Wild. This is a unit that uh, saw some pretty significant changes here. So, first of all, they you can see that they've lost a little bit of speed and they've uh, lost a little bit of attacks. So, one of the major changes in 3rd Edition is that units are essentially getting tweaked so that they hit a little bit better. Their melee has been bumped up to 3+. Plus. And their defense has also been bumped up to five plus as well. So they hit a little bit better. They're a little bit sturdier. And I, I like the changes, especially for the point drop that they got uh, worked in there as well. So that's that's still a functional unit that works the same way that it did before with Pathfinder and Scout, which is essentially Vanguard. Uh, and then gives you a lot more reliability when you're rolling the dice for them. There's another big change where they're no longer infantry, they're now heavy infantry. So they're going to be on a little bit of a bigger base. I think that's good though because you can use them to screen things a lot better. Uh, things that I've found in playtesting is that flanks are a little bit easier to get if you're not paying attention. So a unit like this with scout, being able to put it out there and then higher defense, it's pretty clear what its role is meant to be. Each of the four elemental types are actually now listed as separate units, where in second edition you had to purchase an upgrade or purchase an upgrade uh, to, to a standard elemental to decide which flavor they were going to be. Now they're listed as separate units. I'm going to show you water elementals because I think they got a lot of love. So one of the major changes with them specifically is just the swap from Pathfinder to Strider. So units that have shambling obviously can't go at the double through terrain. So that's the benefit that Pathfinder gives you along with not being hindered by it. But Strider in this case makes so much more sense because, hey, if they hit a fence or something like that, they're made of water. It doesn't, it really would not hang them up. So any kind of obstacles are not going to be an issue for them. They still can't move at the double because they have shambling, but that's perfect now because they're going to be hitting very consistently and it just makes sense. So very logical change for these guys uh, and I, I approve of it. I think that the water elementals are going to be pretty popular in third edition. Sylph Talon Riders were a unit that in second edition got more and more usable as the Clash of Kings packs went on. Well, they're a new name now. They are now the Scorch Wings. And this is a unit that essentially still functions the same with the high speed and flying movement along with some ranged attacks. But it's been tweaked so that the combat is a little bit more appealing here. Now hitting on three plus instead of fours, uh, you really can get an idea of what they do. So it's very rare to see a unit that has a three plus melee, high speed, flying, nimble profile uh, Thunder's Charge 1, yes, but, you know, if you want to bump that up with, you know, different things like Bane Chant or possibly a item that can do that for you, there's a really good opportunity to do that with these guys if you wanted to make them more combat focused. Uh, I think that they are definitely pushed a little bit more towards combat, which makes more sense, especially in 3rd edition. So uh, this is a unit that I think a lot of people are going to like, and I really hope we come out with models for them because I think they're, it's just a really good opportunity to put something like this out that I think nature players and many other players will like as well. Next up is the only greater elemental that is actually listed as a titan, and that is the greater earth elemental. This guy got buffed, so he is hitting now with significantly more attacks, with 12 attacks. He's got brutal high crushing strength, so for you dwarf players out there that uh, didn't get to see their earth elemental stuff, here's a peek at what some of these things are going to look like in your list. So he has a ton of nerve, super high defense, great crushing strength. Uh, shambling as well, or uh, shambling and strider as well. So that makes it so, like I said, with the water elementals, he can move around quite a bit more uh, freely. And obviously, it makes sense. He's this giant rock monster. Not much is going to trip him up. So this is a really decent change. Yes, the points went up, but that kind of makes sense for the different, you know, changes that we see here. And with a Titan base size and that kind of a defense, you can really kind of put him out there in a really nice position. Great nerve. Uh, to survive things. And then, you know, knowing that these types of units benefit very well from things that can heal them, let's finish off with the Avatar of the Green Lady. So she is very noticeably different. Uh, she's got one of the coolest rules, I think, in the game, especially for the fluff and lore behind her, and that's imbalance. So essentially, as you move her around the game at the start of your movement turn, you can choose how you want to use her. Do you want to use her for the Radiance of Life and get that uh, extra healing? It's essentially a free heal to every unit within, you know, six inches. So that's fantastic. Uh, don't even have to roll for it. It's just there. Boom. Done. Or you can be more offensive. So later in the game, maybe when things are starting to get chipped away and nature needs that real nice damage boost, this is a great opportunity for her to fly into a great spot and just be like, bam, 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 dropping points of damage here and there. So I think she has gotten a very noticeable change where you can use her with flexibility, uh, but not the flexibility that she was kind of abused with in second edition where, you know, defense six, she'd just park in front of a unit. And now we know how mighty and all that works with yielding and individuals. Uh, she's, she makes way more sense. 
and this is a unit that I think people are going to like because of the point drop and then the healing potential, obviously, with that Radiance of Life. I think those are the two big things in nature especially, but the flexibility is amazing here. So if you think about the Sylph Talon Riders that are now Scorch Wings, and if you think about the Green Lady that uh, is now the Avatar of the Green Lady, and these units both having great flexibility, you can kind of start to see where this would go together. Uh, if you remember the Tree Herder uh, from the elf video, then you'll see that it also had Radiance of Life. So you can't double tap them, you can't put them on there and get two points of damage, but if you spread those units out across the board, then all of a sudden it makes sense. So for you, those of you that like to pair the uh, Green Lady and the Tree Herder together to make this unstoppable combo, you can still essentially do that. Uh, and it's even better now because of the Radiance of Life that is that then projecting over your entire army. So really nice uh, changes for Forces of Nature. We are literally at the end here, guys. We are so close to the release at this point. There are only two factions left. They are both the Abyssals. So I'm going to apologize first and foremost to the Abyssal players, Abyssal Dwarves, and Forces of the Abyss. Uh, I, I think I'm going to put out your video uh, together on the same day on Tuesday. That way you guys don't have to wait anymore. And then on the Thursday of that week, uh, I think I'm going to do a preview of what the Uncharted Empires book is going to look like coming up for third edition in December. So uh, stay tuned. We'll see you then.